Why do you need to vibrate concrete? Well, the bottom line is it comes down to consolidation. When you put the concrete in, called placing the concrete, what you want is you want it to be thin and watery enough that you can achieve something that doesn't have honeycombing or voids, hollow pockets. That's bad, but it's a little bit hard to deal with because if you put in so much water that it's a really watery thin mix, thereby enabling you to get rid of those air pockets really easily, Normally that compromises the strength of the concrete. You can't just add more and more water. You would have to look towards an admixture called super plasticizer or water reducer. It does the same thing as adding a lot of water wood in terms of uh, thinning out the mix, but it doesn't compromise the strength like adding too much water wood. The only problem is that's a little bit expensive. It's not really something that you see a lot for, you know, at home concrete use. That's more like if you are calling a ready mix concrete plant and ordering a high quality engineered concrete mix, you could order some super plasticizer in it. That's more common, less common for at home. So if you're casting at home and you don't have super plasticizer, or maybe you don't want to use it, is it just about vibration? Vibration is what's going to consolidate the concrete. Whether you're making a high rise construction building or a garden planter at home, you want to vibrate the concrete to get all of those little air bubbles out. Whether you have a thin mix or a thick mix, if you use a vibrator, you can still consolidate properly and eliminate that honeycombing problem. Concrete is reliably strong and so useful that it's actually the most used construction material on the planet. But we don't get that reliability if it's full of honeycombing or voids. And the way that you achieve a properly consolidated concrete free of that imperfection is through the process of vibrating. I hope you found this information helpful.